Today we'll be asking the question, why poetry for YA? Teens need to be exposed to a new form of writing and reading that is in a more enjoyable fashion, something they can do for fun, not just study in school. There are opportunities here to follow rules as well as bend and break them. It's a new way of writing, and it's a perspective that they may not always have in looking at the world. Classic verse provides a librarian an opportunity to expose students to the famous authors, names they'll recognize later on in their academic careers. Those famous poets wrote about subject matter that still appeals today. It's always great to catch the references and allusions that are there too. Whether you're reading Lewis Carroll, E.E. E. Cummings, or William Carlos Williams, there are a lot of books out there that still fit and can still be enjoyed by any young adult audience from 12 to 22. Verse novels are when poets take lyrical lines, characters, conflict, plot, and other elements of narrative, and then form, well, novel-like stories in verse form. The works of David Levithan, Elizabeth Acevedo, Jason Reynolds, Jacqueline Woodson, and Kwame Alexander are all prime examples of people who are telling a wide variety of stories in a very poetic sense. Poems of Romantic Love According to the Princeton Encyclopedia of Poetry and Poetics, love poetry is one of the oldest and most widespread types of poetry. It began in ancient Egypt and is still being written today. It is found all over the world and is written by both men and women in a variety of languages and from many different cultures. And what exactly is love? According to Berman, it is what happens when our human emotions of affection, sexual passion, and idealism come together. And that definition sounds very true because love is an emotion and it's a very complex one which is one reason why love poetry is still so popular among teens because teens are emotional people they feel strongly poetry is so well suited to them it is the perfect outlet for all those emotions and here we have some recommendations of romantic poems buried alive by ralph fletcher dizzy in your eyes by pat mora Going Over to Your Place, compiled by Paul Janesco, Blushing, Expressions of Love in Poems and Letters by Paul Janesco, and Partly Cloudy by Gary Soto. We also have sports poems. Now, sports poems are often um, described as poems for boys, but they are good for everyone. And they are known to inspire reluctant readers. But sports poems do is they help us to understand what it is like to compete and to play sports. They help us experience winning or finally achieving a goal. They also help us experience the utter despair of losing or being injured. Some examples of sport poems are Arnold Adolph's Sports Pages and The Basket Counts or Lillian Morrison's Slam Dunk or Sprints and Distances. Poems about teen tragedy, angst, and joy. These poems are relevant to teens' everyday lives. They're very popular, especially those that are written by teens themselves. As Brock puts it, this type of poetry speaks directly to teens about sadness, abandonment, depression, loneliness, death, running away, and more. And some of the recommendation, recommendations we have for this type of poem are Voices in the Air by Naomi Shabab Nye, For Everyone by Jason Reynolds, Black Girl Magic, by Mahogany Brown, Pierced by a Ray of Sun by Ruth Gordon, and Poems from Homeroom by Kathy Appelt. All right, we also have horror poetry, and this is a much smaller category, uh, but it is growing. There are a lot more novels being written for young adults um, in this category. Um, but the one poem book that really stands out is this one. Lies, Knives, and Girls in Red Dresses by Ron Kirchie. And it's an edgy, darkly humorous, mostly free verse book that are dark retellings of familiar fairy tales. And we have poems about neighborhoods. These poems describe life in a specific region or culture. They can have unique voices as well as universal themes. These poems take the reader all over the world and help us to empathize with the emotions expressed. This type of poetry invites readers and writers to bring their backgrounds, perspectives, and language to the task of interpretation and composition. 
Some examples are Gary Soto's Neighborhood, Neighborhood Odes, Lori Carlson's Cool Salsa, Bilingual Poems on Growing Up Latino Latina in the United States, A Fire in My Hands by Gary Soto, Soto, Pat Mora's My Own True Name, New and Selected Poems for Young Adults, and Walter Dean Meyer's Here in Harlem, Poems and Many Voices, as well as Naomi Shabab's Nye's 19 Varieties Gazelle, Poems of the Middle East. Poetry does not always have to be serious. Humorous poems are a great example of this. Young adults love humor, and it shouldn't surprise us that there's humor in a lot of the things that are written for them. Humorous poems are not really a genre. Like with the rest of literature, when you try and fit poems into a nice, neat little box based on their subject, you're going to find that a lot of things overlap. This is especially true with humorous poems, as many times humor is kind of the secondary trait and not really the primary trait. An example of this is Shakespeare Bat's Cleanup by Ron Cordage. It's also a verse novel, but it's still funny. Teenagers feel things deeply. They're very emotional and we all know this. Because of this, poetry can be a great way for them to express themselves. Some teens may find freedom in the restrictive stanzas and rhyming patterns, some types of poetry, and other teens may thrive with freestyle poetry. It's a great way to see inside the minds of teenagers, but it's often ignored by academics who would rather read about an adult's perspective of what's going on in the minds of teenagers and not an actual teenager's opinion about what's going on in their mind. So some recommendations are Paint Me Like I Am, which is a collection of poems by teens who have worked with Writers Corp. Things I Have to Tell You, Poems and Writings by Teenage Girls. Uh, think You Hear Me, Poems and Writings by Teenage Boys. And both of those were edited by Betsy Franco. And then The Rose That Grew From the Concrete by Tupac Shakur. This one was found after his death, so I think that makes it just a little bit cooler, personally. Poet Laureates. Now, if you're like me, the first question you asked is, what does a poet laureate actually do? Well, a poet laureate is an appointed advocate for poetry. Usually, they're appointed by some sort of government or organization. So we have the Youth Poet Laureate that was started in 2017. Um, you may recognize it from the presidential inauguration where Amanda Gorman, the 2017 Poet Laureate, gave a reading. The Youth Poet Laureate is young poets committed to artistic excellence, civic engagement, and social justice. Then you also have the Young People's Poet Laureate. Now this role is filled by an adult. It was started in 2006, and the purpose of it is to raise awareness of poetry for young people. So here we have pictures of our Poet Laureates. We have our Youth Poet Laureate, Alexandra Huynh, and then we have our Young People's Poet Laureate, Naomi Shihab Nye, and she was appointed in 2019, and she's still the, the Young People's Poet Laureate. The Young People's Poet Laureate can serve uh, multiple years, but the Youth Poet Laureate can only serve one year. Not only can teens read poetry, but they can write it too. Make sure that you have some creative writing manuals on your shelves. The Library as a Physical Space is another fantastic resource that you can use to support the poetic arts. Whether that be through competitive slams or open mic nights, or finding ways to host and mentor Poetry Out Loud, the opportunities to validate, support, promote, and advocate are all out there. Whatever the reason behind why a poet writes, or what a poem may mean, a teen audience should be there to read, listen, and partake in that wonderful world of poetry. <laughs>